or finally I hear some voices because it seems to be even virtual now, but uh, I really like, I'm Italian, you know, so I like to be in contact with you to, to move my hands, so allow me to do it. So first of all, uh, it's great to see all of you here, especially after a party like yesterday. Actually, I have to admit, I had some difficulties to, to go to sleep, but not for the party. The reason was because after yesterday, uh, I was starting to say, what, what I can really say more? What I can really share more that could be interesting? And especially, unfortunately, I was shocked by the BioNTech case and Mikhail presenting that because at the end of the day, what he told us is, well, you just need a few weeks, a few months to do everything. And so what I can share, I start with the uh, journey, the Zambon journey, actually was intriguing that there was a question mark, because it could be uh, some, something interesting to share. But I cannot go to sleep and start to say, okay, I have, you know, you have to find excuses why you are not so good. So I started saying, okay, well, you know, when you have millions of people dying and you do have a solution, for sure you, are a, you have a compelling purpose. In a way, you have that huge uh, driving force. Was that enough to sleep? No. So I said, okay, what else? Well, they started from scratch. Nothing was existing of what I understood. Well, in Zambon, we had all the infrastructures existing. We have all the processes existing. So, yeah. Even more, the third excuse. People, they could hire all new people, select the people, probably with the right uh, or the approach that they wanted to the profile that they wanted. Normally, at least as in Zambon, we are 2,500 people, by the way, 700 million to know over, so not so huge, not so small. Uh, and you have to really engage all these people. So, say that, I can start the presentation, <laughs> otherwise I will never finish, because that three excuses led me to go to sleep, and, uh, and then I'm here, and hopefully I will share something interesting for you. So, uh, I don't know if you have uh, something like this, uh, or you have already seen, but I think it's important to recognize where our industry was starting when we were discussing about uh, even CRM. Uh, I'm in pharma business since uh, 10 years before I was a different business when I came in and I started to understand what is a CRM in pharma. I was shocked because it was not a CRM, it was not a customer relationship tool, it was a sales relationship tool. Actually, Robert was saying something about our sales rep. To be honest, to me, it was more a way to control the sales force. And as human beings are not normally stupid, I guess the Salesforce were recognizing that. So when then we evolved from the focus on productivity to finally understand there is a value in our customers, and then we wanted to have a real interaction with them, and that's why we have all these ecosystems, these new CRMs, whatever, but still we have to face what our reps were thinking, because maybe that it was five years ago in some companies, 10 years ago in the other companies, must, but most probably these persons are still in your organization. Our journey basically was starting at the end of 2018. But not surprisingly enough, I think it's again something that you have seen in your companies, two major product, projects started. Comex team was launching this fantastic new CRM, a real CRM. Uh, we're working with the countries to design it. For the Comex team was the first step, the most important thing. Marketeers, the global marketing was starting their project on moving from product centricity to customer centricity. Guess what? The whole 2019 to discuss what was more important. Is the technology, or is this uh, the, the, the customer centricity? Who is the king? The content of the channel. And all of this discussion 
goes around in, the, in, in, the, uh, in our organization, teams were working, but luckily, that I think uh, that was the only positive thing, or one of the positive things of, of the pandemic, the pandemic arrived. Beginning of 2020, top of the discussions. Uh, and <laughs> really boring. I guess you have also these slides in your slide deck with all the reason why we should change. And why we did it. Officially, because we wanted to convince, to give a purpose to our teams. We were looking from our position to involving all our colleagues. In reality, at least for us, was a way to convince who was above us, that was making sense to do it. And we were really lucky, again, it arrives these waves, you know, we are at the seaside, you see the waves arriving, oh wow, now we can finally do it, we can really put the technology, put the di di digitalization as a, a real keyword. But I I'm, I'm asking you, I think uh, I've heard something about that, waves has uh, two flows, the first one brings you one direction, then comes back. And so nowadays, I heard, okay, but we really need all this digital. All these things are still valid. Because now, maybe that face-to-face, -face, again, is the only thing that counts. Our, our ACPs are really bored and overwhelmed with all our super-channel communications. They want to, to come back to, to, to real humans. And here, let me here are two funny examples, because I think we have to, to use a bit of common sense. So when, uh, when I was preparing myself to, to come yesterday morning, I was putting my stuff, and then I said, OK, I take my business cards. Oh, shit, I forgot my business card. Oops, do I need a business card? And then yesterday was some nice uh, sketch between people. Please take my business card. I don't need it. I, I scan it. So I don't know what will do that the, the people and the, our uh, colleagues that are as a business of a business card. But I think this, this, BA, this behavior is changed and will remain like this. And even more important, I guess, at least for me that I'm Italian, I came here with my fantastic tie. You had a lot of pictures with the ties outside. None of you was dressing a tie. So I. I said, OK, I will adapt also to this change, and I will not use the tie. I don't know what will happen with this business again. But again, stupid, funny things. But just to say, yes, for sure, there, there will be forever this need to harmonize the different communication channels. Maybe one month, we have to recognize that, uh, I don't know, some digital channels are more important than the other months is different. Or even more, finally, we are all different. I will dress a tie sooner or later, despite nobody will do it. So to do that, we said, OK, when we recognized that in our company, we said, well, how to do it? Again, instead of calling Bay McKinsey, whatever, we start to, to put countries uh, together with global functions. And uh, my goal was really, let's find a common understanding of what we need. So everybody will say, OK, patient, customers, HPs are the center. OK, fine. OK, we put it at the center. And then what you need? And immediately came the marketeer saying, first of all, we have to understand the customer. And so we, want to, we have to need what they want. That we have understand the digital preferences. And so we start to work on this personas concept to involve agency, to involve, again, the, the field force, and so on and so forth. OK, fine. And we even started to put, OK, which functions has to work? For sure, marketing, but also comics. OK, fine. Next step, content. Once you have understood what the customer needs, let's prepare the content with these new channels. It's totally different. How to, to swift? from a traditional uh, market, uh, marketing campaign to this 
pills of content, how to really feed the need of this content. So what about processes, MLR processes, or the way we are, we are producing this content, internal, external, and so, and so on. Technology, that's not only CRM, actually. That's the kind of ecosystem that is, for sure, Salesforce automation, but it's marketing automation. There are portals. How many portals we do have in, the, in, in, in our companies? I mean, you cannot count. What are really the new technologies uh, that we need to, 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 to put together? And once you have the channels, the content, personal personas, we all say the face of our company is our reps. They are really the contact point uh, with, with our customers. And they have to understand that there is not really a real fear. They are still there, but they remember the first slide. And they could tell us, OK, also 10 years ago, you told us it was a help for us. And change totally the way you, you can communicate face to face and virtually, and they have to do both. How to train them? What is the new engagement? And finally, last but not least, is okay, we have to measure how it works. And actually, this to me is the starting point. This is the starting point for we call spinning the wheel, like a wheel. So restart with understand from the KPIs what really the customers uh, like, want, because I can tell that uh, coming back to to what Jose told uh, yesterday, I identified that uh, <coughs> Luigi Boretto is uh, okay, a digital uh, fan. Okay, I sent to him 20 mails or digital campaigns or digital contact points. He never clicked once. I'm still convinced that he is a digital guru. Maybe it's different. And the sixth pillar you put in the bottom that we put in portal is really change management and the organizational upskill. And we'll spend a bit more about that because at the end of the day, what really we recognize is that we are forced to work together, trying to break these silos that we have in different organizations. That's not so easy. So what we did, once, once we recognized that, Naturally, we said, OK, all the global leaders could come every month to a meeting. It was a first spontaneous meeting in the story of my organization, I think, because we said, OK, let's call it Operating Model Committee. And every month, all the global functions, global marketing, government, medical, but even HR, compliance, were sitting with regional and commercial head, so, and we were discussing what? We said, OK, we have some work streams. You have seen this uh, sixth uh, part of the pile. We uh, identified which of the one has a higher gap for us, that so we wanted to improve two or three of them. But also, we wanted to, to be agile and to test it. So we said, why not to make this famous pilot? I'm not the pilot lovers, but because sometimes you do the pilot and then you forget to scale. So you jeopardize the organization. But we did it in a way where they were sponsored at the global level of these pilots, and the pilots were really a pilot to test that global solution and then expand a global solution. It was great because we put country, country managers as leaders of that pilot, reporting to the global team every month how things were going. But even more successful, I mean, it was a, a real, I could say, a minor thing that becomes more important. We put an additional budget of half a million. It's not for us, it could be relevant. It's not, for sure, it's not the, ma the majority of, of the budget of any of these global functions. But that budget, half a million, and the initiative that has been, must be sponsored with that budget, must be agreed by the whole committee. For the first time, we have a common budget. And I tell you, the way we, we have spent that money was much, much more wise than all the others. There was a, a comment, and uh, David Deck was asking us how, I mean, if we are really partners, 
with, uh, with other companies. And that, to me, was, was a good example. Actually, I've seen before the Robert presentation. Grunenthal for, uh, for Zambon uh, is a kind of sister, I cannot say sister companies, but it's two, three years that, thank you to Dario that we met uh, three years ago, we started to exchange how we were doing things. So we, we created a wider panel with Novartis, Sandots, um, as I said, Grunenthal, Gilead, the network that we had. I mean, nothing special. We started to understand, okay, let's discuss together how we see this transformation. And one of the points that I wanted to deep dive was, okay, using our model, so the five plus one, <laughs> the five segments plus the, the change management, what you believe are the most important one, what, what, we, what is the key business process we have to take here. And really, uh, you see, change management is the most important. And unfortunately for Comex team, that was a shock. The technology is the less important. To be a shock also for us as for our vendors. Because again, technology is like, I don't know, uh, I'm a biker, biker so uh, a fantastic carbon bike. If you want to perform, you need it, for sure. But if you are not trained, you cannot win the race. And buying a, a, a carbon bike, yes, you need some time to convince, but then it's relatively easy. The difficulty is being able to use it in the right way. And then, if this, the change management, this organizational upskill is the most important, we say, okay, let's start from scratch. Because all these analysis we did before starting, and they all together, I mean, at the same time, and say, what do we want to do in the change management? It's just a word. So, what we did, first of all, we heard the competence as a word that is important. I mean, is our existing people in our organization <laughs> competent enough on these new competences that we need. What are these new competences? Otherwise, we cannot tell to the others and prepare a training. So we did this called omnichannel DNA uh, at the end of the day. We define what we need to, re to succeed as a competent, but in a very detailed way. And that was the base also for the job descriptions and for on, on you know understanding if our people were, were good in that role. Second, a game. If there is a totally new way of interacting with the customer, it's not just a change for the sales rep. It's a change for everybody that are working for the customers. And if you don't want to let them feel that they are the only one that they need to change, you have to involve everybody. So we did this game. So all the people of the organization had to go through quite a long test. I was quite disappointed because I took one hour to go through it. And then I understood that, OK, the longer you take, means that you are going further in the evaluation. <laughs> and you know, there are eight levels from the beginner to the guru. But the names are nice. So you can see, it's, I mean, there was a senior manager of our organization saying to everybody, hey, I'm a surfer. So then it was difficult to say, OK, surfer is just the second level. But OK. <laughs> but everybody was happy about that. And then we focused on two different uh, training paths. Actually, we invested more on the last four. Why? Because generally speaking, when there is a, a change process, you have basically three categories of people. Uh, one are the more advanced in the change. They are enthusiastic about the change. Finally, it arrived. The other one are the more resistant, the less capable. And the third one, the majority, are just in the middle. We decided, let's work on the upper part, the last four, because if we are able to further increase their competencies, we will move this major portion of the population that are in the middle. And if they move 
towards the acceptance of the change, to the understanding of the change, then they will bring all the other in. And so we did this Hello Learning Path webinars, uh, again, designed by us with people coming from outside to share best practice from outside, but also from inside. Uh, quite a long process, seven webinars every two, three weeks, uh, and then a test at the end to understand it to really feel successful. And that's uh, basically with the, the boost of this transformation. So, we have done a lot on the work streams, on the, the basement of the transformation. We try to do a lot on, on the people side. But as somebody was saying at the end of the day, if you want to change the way we're working, as Grunenthal did, they, they launched a new organization. And that's what, what we will do, basically, since this week. So we are changing our organization. So that's why I'm not any more responsible of what we have seen before. I'm actually, since Monday, uh, the new global head of uh, the business unit of primary care. So I'm moving from the commercial excellence to a business role. And I think it was a smart move, maybe, not for, for, for the company. So Robert was sharing with me yesterday. Well, that's a smart move because for the company now, you have a, a business leader that really truly believes on the importance of this model. Because if the business really don't believe, don't trust in it, it's very, very difficult that the other teams can push and go. That's all from my side. I, hopefully it was interesting. Thank you again.